When my DAR ISA started elementary school, everything changed. The first shift was with my wife, Paisley. Up until that point, our relationship had felt stable, even happy. We had been married for several years, and after dating for a year, we had quickly settled into a routine. When ISA was born, there were the typical challenges of new parenthood, but I never doubted our connection. We were a family. I thought I knew my wife. I thought I understood her. But when ISA entered elementary school, it was like a switch had flipped inside her. Paisley began to pull away, slowly at first. Her indifference started with small things. Quiet dinners where we barely exchanged words. Her cool responses to my attempts at conversation. Then it escalated. I remember the first time I really noticed it. I had brought home dinner after work one night and asked her if she wanted to eat together. Hey! I bought dinner. Want to join me? I asked, trying to keep things light. But she didn't even look up. Her gaze was distant. Her expression flat. It was as if she hadn't even heard me. That night, I sat at the table alone, eating in silence, while she busied herself with other things. The house felt cold. As the weeks passed, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. Paisley's attitude toward me had shifted completely, and it wasn't just neglect. It was active avoidance. I remember another night, sitting beside her on the couch. Paisley, I began carefully. Did I do something wrong? If I upset you in some way, just tell me. We can talk about it. She turned her head toward me then, and for the first time in weeks, I saw emotion in her eyes, anger. You've been annoying from the start, she said, her voice sharp and cutting. Your voice makes me angry, so don't talk to me. Her words hit me like a slap. I blinked, stunned into silence. All I could manage was a week. All right then. But her coldness didn't end there. ISA, who had overheard our exchange, looked at her mother and asked innocently, Mom, did you hear something just now? Paisley glanced at our daughter and replied, No, I didn't hear anything. I felt invisible. As time went on, that feeling grew stronger. Paisley and ISA began planning things without me. Small trips, outings, moments they clearly wanted to share with each other but not with me. One afternoon, I heard ISA excitedly tell her mother, I can't wait. I wonder if Grandma will be happy to see us. They were preparing for a trip, and it was obvious I wasn't included. I stood in the doorway, watching them pack. Where are you two going? I asked, trying to keep the hurt out of my voice. But, as usual, they ignored me. They left the house together, smiling and laughing, and I stood there, feeling like I had ceased to exist in their world. That was the moment I made up my mind. I couldn't live like this anymore, being a ghost in my own home. Two days later, I packed my things and found a small apartment. It wasn't much, but it was mine. I moved out without saying a word. A few days after they returned from their trip, Paisley called me. Why is the house empty? She demanded, her voice tight with frustration. I moved out. I replied calmly, You what? She was furious. What do you mean you moved out? I found a new place. I didn't think you or ISA needed me anymore. Paisley's anger exploded over the phone. You just moved out without even telling us. The house is too big for you alone. What about us? I thought that was obvious. For the last three years, you've treated me like I don't exist. You and ISA seem fine on your own. You're being ridiculous, she shouted. We're here, aren't we? You didn't even ask us. You don't want to live with me, Paisley. I said quietly but firmly. You've made that very clear. Paisley couldn't believe what she was hearing. Bring everything back now. This is unbelievable. I can't, I said. It was a rental in my name, and I didn't renew the lease. I've moved all of your things into a storage unit. You can take them whenever you want. Her voice cracked. So, what? You've left us homeless? ISA and I have nowhere to go. You've been acting like you didn't need me for years, Paisley. What's change? Her response was sharp, desperate. We can't live like this. ISA and I need you. 
You need my income. I corrected her. Not me. Paisley paused, clearly taken aback. What's going to happen to us? Why are you doing this? I was done with the excuses. The first ones to push me away were you and ISA. I said, my voice low and controlled. But inside, my frustration was growing. You've treated me like I'm not part of this family for years. What did you expect? Paisley's voice grew cold again. If that's how you feel, then divorce is the only option. Divorce, I repeated, surprised at how quickly the word came out of her mouth. But then I realized it made sense. You know what? I was thinking the same thing. Paisley gasped. For the first time in years, I saw a real shock in her eyes. She hadn't expected me to agree. She thought I would cave, like I always did. But not this time. You can't be serious, she said, her voice faltering. I am. I'll have my lawyer contact you. Don't reach out to me directly anymore. Her voice sharpened again. You're going to regret this. I'll be filing for alimony and child support. That's fine. We'll let the lawyers handle it. You took the house without asking, she screamed. You can't just take everything from me, an ISA. You're a monster. I didn't respond to her accusations. I had no more fight left in me, at least not for her. A few days later, we met face to face, our lawyers by our sides. Paisley looked at me with disbelief, as though she still couldn't comprehend how things had spiraled so far out of control. But for me, the decision had been made long ago. I had lived in silence for too long. There was no going back. With a voice dripping with sarcasm, I remarked, Yeah, I've been sleeping and eating better since you guys left. My response seemed to shock Paisley, leaving her momentarily speechless. Let's get started. Paisley's lawyer initiated, but as they began to lay out their claims, I felt my eyes widen in disbelief. Harassment? Towards Paisley and ISA? Yes. She was indeed claiming mental anguish, but then she added a condition. She would consider restructuring the marriage if her husband expressed remorse and changed his attitude. That's simply not true. Before I could stop myself, I interrupted. That's not accurate. The look on Paisley's face was fierce, her anger palpable. What do you mean, Mr. Liar? Do you have any evidence of the mental anguish that Paisley describes? I replied, This person has been obstructing me from gathering any evidence. In a dramatic flourish, Paisley pressed a handkerchief to her face, a move that almost made me chuckle. It's all your fault in the first place. I see I'm the bad one here. Please proceed, lawyer. The lawyer presented a video. Here is the evidence of the mental anguish your husband has caused. I watched stunned as the footage played, showing Paisley and ISA completely ignoring me during several conversations. My heart sank as I saw it unfold. This wasn't just a moment of conflict, but a repeated pattern of exclusion. Paisley's face turned an angry shade of red as she watched. Hey, you set up a camera without my permission. This is invalid, she shouted, slamming her hand on the table. The lawyer calmly countered, No, it is valid. Paisley bit her lip in frustration, her expression shifting from anger to desperation. This can't be right. This footage can be edited. It can be manipulated, she protested. The lawyer assured her. We checked. There was no alteration. As she struggled to come up with a valid excuse, I could see her shaking, her composure cracking. If this is your daily norm, then the breakdown of marital life due to malicious amendment is sufficiently recognized. Her lawyer turned pale, glancing at her. Ma'am, this is not what we discussed. Wait just a minute. Are you trying to smear mud on Dad's face? Paisley panicked, her voice rising. You're getting paid by Dad, so you should make sure I win. Are you even a lawyer? What's impossible is impossible the lawyer replied, which only intensified Paisley's anger. So, we'll proceed as per our request, correct? Paisley sulked into silence, glaring at me with a mix of fury and disbelief. Please sign here regarding the alimony I have to pay. Alimony? What? I was baffled, Paisley insisted. Because I'm a woman. 
Her lawyer rushed to explain. No, alimony is not just for frail women. Everyone around her denied her claims. As realization dawned on her, she turned pale. I, I can't pay that. It's not that you can't, you have to, her lawyer replied. Then I won't divorce, she screamed, tearing the divorce papers in half. Paisley, if we don't get divorced, then there's no need for alimony, right? I want a divorce. I don't want to continue with you. Don't be selfish. What about ISA? You want to take her father away? No, her father isn't me. I responded coldly, and I could see the bewilderment in Paisley's eyes. Too bad. I've already done a DNA test. Covering her mouth in shock, she stammered. That, that can't be true. I had another test done. Why, you have the same blood type as the wedding photos. I challenged. There was a guy who looked remarkably like Keela in those pictures. With her head in her hands, she pleaded. If she were a daughter who loved and trusted me, I might pretend not to know you. I'm sorry. It was just a one-time mistake. It doesn't matter here. Sign this. I presented the divorce papers again. She slowly looked up at me, eyes pleading. Oh, and I'm also canceling the family card. Seriously? You're not family anymore. I shot back, feeling a mix of frustration and relief. Resigned. Paisley filled out the divorce papers, tears streaming down her cheeks. With the lawyers as witnesses, I submitted the documents to City Hall, finally free, for a while. I relished my single life until one day I unexpectedly ran into my ex-wife and former daughter-in-law. I hadn't wanted to mention the details of our situation to avoid causing unnecessary worry. Unlike you, your mom is very kind. She loves ISA as her granddaughter. I'll tell her the real story next time. I said, trying to deflect them, but they firmly grabbed my clothes, refusing to let go. Wait! Where are you going? This is where you live, right? I have no intention of letting strangers like you into my home. Daddy, I'm hungry, Ella whined, sending shivers down my spine. This was the first time someone had called me Daddy in that way, and it felt unsettling. How can you say that to your cute daughter? Paisley raised her voice, but I responded, Creepy is creepy. However, my feelings seem incomprehensible to you both. Let's go have something to eat and talk. Paisley coaxed. I felt it was better than letting them into my home, so I reluctantly headed to a nearby diner with them. Hey, can I eat this? ISA asked, pointing at the menu. Yeah, do whatever you want. I said, trying to remain detached. Not hungry. Food doesn't taste good when I have to look at your faces. I retorted, a hint of bitterness creeping in. Paisley looked at me with the same smile she had when we were dating, as if trying to bridge the gap. Feeling better? It's just a fight. You're overreacting with divorce, she insisted, her tone almost naive. I struggled to understand her reasoning and involuntarily glanced at her. You had a beautiful wife and a cute daughter. Don't you want that kind of family life back? I want to live with daddy. ISA chimed in, looking up at me with innocent, pleading eyes. You're not my daughter, though. Why would you say that? Daddy is daddy, ISA insisted, puffing out her cheeks in defiance. See? You're cute. You forgot we're divorced. That was just a moment of confusion, right? Let's go back to being a family again. I was baffled by the illogic of her words, almost confused by their simplicity. Let bygones be bygones. Daddy, please. Paisley urged, grabbing my hand. I shuddered, realizing she was attempting to prevent my escape. No. Do you want me to report you to the police again? After the divorce was finalized, I've been in contact with them due to your repeated harassment. If you ambush me again, a warning won't suffice. Why would you say something like that to your wife? Paisley leaned against me, her smile unervingly familiar. Because we're divorced. Remarriage is easy, you know. Her smile resembled more of a witch's grin. I can live with daddy again. Whether ISA understood or not, she seemed genuinely happy with the idea. Paisley, 
I have no intention of rebuilding a life with a woman who keeps cheating. What do you want? Increase the alimony, she shot back, feigning innocence. What are you talking about? I never cheated. That's when I silently showed her the data on my smartphone. Isn't that Ella's dad? Your ex. The screen displayed footage of Paisley and a man walking arm in arm toward an entertainment district. I watched as her face went pale. What is this? When I found out about ISA, I investigated you too. Turns out you've been two-timing me all along. That's not true, she protested, but I could see the panic in her eyes. And you've been inviting men over to the house when I'm not around. What nerve you have. I showed her another photo, which made her complexion drain even further. Do you know you can claim damages for infidelity within three years of finding out? I was kind enough not to pursue this. Listen to me. It's not like that. Paisley's pitiful, illogical excuses only made me colder. Daddy, don't bully mommy. ISA cried, her eyes wide with confusion. I'm not. He's your real dad. Be happy you can be with your real parents now. At that, ISA's face turned gloomy. I like the other daddy. I don't like this one, she sobbed quietly, and I was left dumbfounded. You're upset because you couldn't get alimony from me? So your affair partner is giving you the cold shoulder. Paisley clung to me. Desperation etched on her face. Please, at least for this child. I have no obligation to care for a child that's not biologically mine. Daddy, I'm not your dad. At my words, ISA looked hurt, her small frame trembling. That's cool. How could you say such a thing to a child? Paisley cried out, her voice breaking. It's all your fault. I...